to Faith Greater Than Fear, our interview series, where we just join people from all over the world, uh, sometimes in the United States, but often in other countries. And today we have that privilege, that honor to join some staff members, some team members with GMPI from our Eurasia Regional Center. And so we're very happy to be joined today by Andre and Anya Gordiainov. Andre works on our team, Anya is his wife. How are you both doing today? Thank you. We're doing well. Thank you. Very good. Hope the, you're doing well too. I'm great. I'm great. The Gordiaino family is very special. Um, and so could you could you just describe your family to us a little bit? Uh, uh, well, hello everyone. We have a large family, we have nine children, and we live in a beautiful country in the very east of Europe, in Ukraine. And we are very blessed and honored and privileged to be a part of the great family of children. Serving people and all over the world. So thank you for inviting us for your interview. Well, Thank you. it's our pleasure and our, and our honor. Well, I know that you have several children and that over the years you have been committed to adoption. Several, uh, several of your children are, are adopted. So can you tell us a little bit about the decision to adopt and, and why you made that decision, why you've been committed to that? Mm -hmm. Uh, so the decision to adopt children, it was not the uh, first decision. Actually, it became the final decision of small little steps, if we can say so. So this story started long ago in the 90s when the Soviet Union fell apart and the economical situation, the political situation was really devastating in Ukraine. And it was something similar to Great Depression in the United States. Many families, um, people didn't have jobs, didn't have where to live, and there were so many children left behind. Children who were not needed, families fell apart as well. So according to some statistics, over 100,000 children lived in the streets in the 90s. So, and we were young at that point, so we could see uh, what was going on, and we were new believers, we just came to Christ and accepted Christianity, and so we just had to do something about it. So, at that point, I personally uh, kind of served as a camp director for the church. Our church did camps and we started inviting children from children homes, from the streets even, to the camps, just for them to be in normal environment and to have some good food, at least for 10 days. So that's how we got to know the situation even better. So and at that point, Andre was working as a teacher of mathematics at the regular school in Ecuador, and he already knew Sergei Galavin was a part of his apologetics ministry. So Sergei invited uh, Andre to join our camp, summer camp. So he came to the camp where I was the director. <laughs> so that was, that's how we actually met. So Andre served at the camp. And so I'll mention. Just so our audience knows, Sergei Golovin is the uh, regional director of the center that Andre works for, just so everyone knows that. Okay, yes. continue. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yes. Well, we're so used to his name in our family because I, I personally believe it was his idea to, <laughs> to get us know of each other. So, but Andre was a blessing at the camp. We had really good time. Our, the ground of our family, from there, we started our way, and it initially led us to adoption. So we never regretted our decision, and looking back, we understand that that decision was not, like I said, it wasn't rational. It was a leap of faith in many ways. And I remember now people saying, what are you doing? Like, are you not afraid? Like, don't you have any fears? And we were like, 
well, maybe, but we were so busy. You know, the children that came into our family uh, had all kinds of health problems and they were very little. So we were really busy with all the kids. Actually, it took us three years to get all the nine children. So within three years of our family life, we had nine children. Mm -hmm. So we were really busy and we just enjoyed life and got provided from all the needs we have. So you had adopted nine children over the space of three years? Uh, no, no. No, we adopted seven children. Uh, and so we had two somewhere in between. <laughs> but it was really, really fast, you know, like. Um, like if to go into detail, the city government was so happy that they found the way to get rid of some mm -hmm. of the children, you know, because um, it was on city's budget to provide for the children that were left without parental care. So the city didn't want to spend money. And here we were, <laughs> and they were like, oh, take this, take that one, take this. So we took, um, everybody we could legally and well so we believe god led each child to our family in a miraculous way and we can talk about it forever because those ways were really <laughs> special yeah i'm sure to say the family history is a is a long long story but thank you for thank you for sharing that with us and thank you for being willing to do the right thing even if it was kind of a, a big leap of faith, like you mentioned. So that's- <laughs> Well, thank you. Okay. And, and like Andre said before, it wasn't really smooth. Like we had problems, we had conflicts even sometimes, we had some disagreements and challenges and tests and all kinds of stuff, but it's life. It's still God provided. It has been mercy all the way. I keep on saying this words from the song, it has been mercy all the way. And now, they are grown up. Some of them are really independent, and so. But some of them are still with us. We have four girls who are still staying with us. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. <laughs> and Andre said that quite often he thinks of the words of some wise man who said, "Before I had children, I had nine different theories how to upbring the children. When I got children." I have nine children and no theories. <laughs> I have no idea how to bring them up. <laughs> I guess you keep, keep testing those theories. Oh, yeah, because everybody is different. So I guess uh, I, you mentioned that you have four girls still at home with you. And I know mm -hmm. in recent, the past couple months, you've actually moved to a new home. And uh, during the pandemic, that had to be a kind of unique mm -hmm. situation. So can you tell us what was it like to move to oh, a new mm -hmm. home and, and start uh, you know, uh, making the arrangements there for it to be a great place for living? What was that like? Well, <laughs> Andres is talking about uh, quarantine and pandemic time. Um, there is a saying in Russian, it says, um, uh, the, the laws are strict, but it doesn't mean we have to follow the laws. <laughs> so here people do not really take it seriously, which is not good in many ways. But that quarantine time for many people just, they have actually a choice. They die because they don't have money, because they don't have a job, or they die because they get sick and they cannot pay for the treatment because so it's, it was quite a test. And the reason we had to move was uh, we used to rent an apartment in, in our new place when we moved from the Crimea after the occupation by Russia. It wasn't easy to find the place because whenever someone had nine children, they were like, oh, no, 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 no place for rent for you. <laughs> so, but we finally found a very nice family and for six years. We rented their place, but they decided to sell the apartment. So we had to find a different place. But the problem was prices went up because of that quarantine time. 
and it was impossible to go and look for places because mm -hmm. you know no transportation most people would not really welcome coming someone to look at their home so but we were blessed we found a person who has an old house not far from Lutsk, the city we used we live in actually and she says if you do some remodeling, you can stay here for free for a year or for a couple of years. So we did all the remodeling, <laughs> two of us, and with the help of two girls and two sons help us when they had time, they came to provide some help for us. And we would like to thank everyone who supported us financially and prayerfully and just encouraged us and believed in our because at first it was pretty devastating because we are city people and moving to a country <laughs> to an old house it was quite quite a change even though we moved before it's we moved at least seven times, seven times. but those were like apartments and we had our like friends around and family around so it, and it wasn't under stress but this time it was pretty stressful but still it helped us find out many interesting things about ourselves <laughs> <laughs> we actually had fun because we had to do lots of work together and it was interesting to get organized and to share responsibilities and appreciate what other people actually do especially when we took the garbage out it was like how do people do that <laughs> it's such a difficult job <laughs> like the kids were really impressed because we had to rent a special car and the you know guys came and took all the garbage away and so it's quite a job but they get paid for that so <laughs> so i think it was nice experience for all of us Mm -hmm. in many mm -hmm. ways even mm -hmm. though it wasn't easy and for now we don't feel like we're ready for another <laughs> move at least for a year yeah. mm -hmm. so some people say when you grow older uh, it's not it's not getting easier but it's getting more fun so <laughs> we're just getting more fun but still, sometimes you wish you had not that much fun. <laughs> well, I hope that'll be a great a great home for you. And even though your home has changed recently, I know Andre's work, I think, has been consistent for GMPI. So could you share a little bit about what you do for GMPI and maybe how has it changed? Has it changed at all because of COVID-19? Andre says that in GNPI he has several ministries, so several responsibilities, and mostly he's responsible for making uh, video clips, educational video clips for seminaries, churches, and different ministries. He is uh, also responsible for recording lectures, which Sergei Galavin performs. So he puts together his lectures and does. Uh, all the work which is connected with, with that. Uh, he also writes books. Actually, he wrote already three books. One is on physics. It's uh, physics of God's creation. And then a book on critical thinking and the book on scientific method. And right now he's working on a new book and it's on skepticism. So how to be skeptical <laughs> in the right way. <laughs> And just his working title, they, they will decide later what the title will be. Uh, nowadays, under these new conditions of quarantine, um, like the ministry has to be modified a little bit. Uh, one of the problems is that there are no lectures right now, so Sergei cannot go with the lectures to any places. But praise God, they had lots of materials. Uh, video recorded beforehand so now they put together courses and students can take those video courses which they gave did, which is helpful it's not <laughs> you know real-time lecture but still 
So, and quite often students ask for lectures. They say, when can we register for a new course? And uh, Andre says, we are blessed that we have an opportunity to send them to our YouTube channel and to lectures in video format so they can um, study as distance learning students. <laughs> Well, I know that it's it's really the ministry is really filling a need for the schools who need that material during these uh, times where they're learning from home. I also remember hearing that even some uh, some jails and prisons have been the prisoners have been able to make use of the yeah. material as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So that's uh, we just think that's a great a great ministry to the to the people in in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just talked about it yesterday about the ministry and Andre said that in many ways uh, this pandemic opened different doors like new opportunities because people don't really read books sometimes people would not go to church or would not go to any kind of Christian lecture or even if it's just scientific lecture but if it's a short video clip, something very attractive, something which explains the fundamentals, it's really helpful. And we also see among people around us that many are concerned about the basics. They're like, what's going on in this world? So they seek the basics. And that's when they actually many people, they want to understand mm -hmm. how the world is organized, how it was created, how it's run. And so it's really, it's a great way for this ministry to develop, to provide people with this information. And even so, like death, any lethal illness, like death when you get sick, it's awful. But on the other hand, it makes people think about serious matters in this life. And so we see how people get interested in what like Christianity says about it. Why God will let it happen? What do you teach about it? What do you believe about it? And, and it doesn't mean that we have all the answers and you can provide people with all the you know information they need, but it does mean that we can start the dialogue, that they get more open to listen and they can see different examples of how to live and in love and how to have hope among all this mess. And so they get more open to the message. So many people in this world, they just live in this world. So they have answers which are rooted in, you know, regular stuff. But in stressful situations, people understand that that is not everything, that there is more to this world. And so um, God's way are not known to us. So this virus helped us not only us, it helped other people get rid of this I don't know, maybe blinds that which they had on their hands uh, or their eyes and see that there is a different world. There is a different dimension of this world. So it's interesting, like if you look at internet information just in general, you can see two different responses to the situation in the world, to the virus. And the one is worldly response and it's panic. Everything is going crazy, what to do? <laughs> I don't know what to do. And then we see godly response, like Christian response. God is still in control, we have hope. Just, you know, stick to your faith, just keep on. <laughs> so it doesn't mean you do nothing, just sit around, but still you don't have to panic. Well, I know there's another, you know, for your country, there's another challenge that you all have had when it comes to uh, political relations. Um, and so, uh, you know, can you tell us a little bit about what the political climate has been like recently and how has it affected your, your family as well? Well, the political situation is in Ukraine right now is very unstable. 
uh, our previous power, to, so to say, government, which we used to have since uh, 2014, it was very pro-Western. Well, it was oriented to Western democratic uh, values, and they wanted to be uh, uh, one with the civil civilized world, so to say, with the United States and Europe. And, but now we have um, the government, which is more pro-Russian, so to say, but pro-Russian, not in ethical, but in like ethnical, so that it's like Russian as a nation. It's Russia as Soviet Union, as Soviet Union type of country. So it tends to, you know, drag us back to the unity with Russia, to, you know, back to the, <laughs> So 15 uh, republics. So, like, as an example, if we look at the medical issues, like, mm -hmm. some people say, we don't need Western-style medicine. See, at, look at Russia. They have everything for free. Like, in Russia, medicine is free. But you have no choice. Like, in Russia, if you get to hospital, you have no choice. You cannot choose either doctor, or medicine, or Why if you shot? look at Russia intensively, you would know that all the politicians of Russia, they don't go to Russian hospitals, they go abroad to Europe or United States to get medical treatment if they need it. So, but unfortunately, populism, do you have such a word? Well, like populism. politicians, yeah, just talk about popular ideas and people get really like affected by that and tend to trust them so so right now we're just uh, we're just in this situation between so we're going to have elections this weekend we have uh, elections and in many ways it will be obvious <laughs> which way ukraine will go like andrea says it's not that we're trying to idealize any political system, but just say that like United States have the best, or, like Russia have the worst. It's not. But uh, the main principle in worldview is being honest. And we know that the West way is more honest. Because, you know, Russian, Soviet Union, it was built on lies and propaganda. propaganda. And so, we really hope people will choose honest way. Maybe it's not that easy, but it's honest. So in two words. So how, with, with all that conflict in mind, how can we be praying for Ukraine and how can we be praying for, for your family with all that? Uh, Andre says that he believes in, my humble in his humble opinion, <laughs> uh, the situation will start to change when people, everybody actually, everybody starts thinking critically. You know, that people will try to judge any information they receive critically. And the second uh, very important uh, point is that they not only judge it on a rational basis, like what's rational, what's not rational, but they will also appeal to values. Uh, if, when they think not only about how to live well, just I live well, but they will think about neighbor, the society, the country in general. It's like Andre says, it's, it's not bad to be rich, but it's bad to be rich when it means you hurt someone, that you, you know, you do some harm to your neighbor or the people around you. Um, so, okay, so Andre said there is a very good example from our reality. Many people, like we have to wear masks like we do everywhere, and many people wear it like that because it makes it easier to breathe. And Andre says it means that's a good example of when people think about ourselves. Like, like so it's it's important for me that I breathe well. But what if they are, you know, they're not well, they can spread the disease. They don't think about people around. So that's the main problem. 
Well, the Bible says that nation dies because it lacks knowledge. So when, when people don't have enough knowledge, they die. <laughs> so Andrea says, like, the best prayer for Ukraine would be to help people become more self conscious, so to say, to start reflecting on their own uh, actions and how it affects other people. So there is a quite a fashionable, so to say, moment right now, maybe it's everywhere, and it's called a uh, movement of uh, reflection, uh, self-reflection. When you uh, try to reflect on everything you do, and you try to understand what you are doing, even when you like breathe or you walk. So, and it's really important because many people just they act without thinking, without realizing what they are doing, and it creates lots of problems. So many people here, and we still are former Soviet people. You can't help it. It's still. <laughs> obvious. Many people look at the Western world and they see, you know, beautiful houses, rich people, you know, rich cars and good roads, and they think, oh, this is, that is so great. But most of them do not realize that the uh, way of life in the West is the result of a very hard work. So you have to work really hard, and sometimes for a long time to get what you actually care. But people don't, they just don't put it together, don't understand. So, and this change, it comes from your mind and from your heart. When you want to change yourself first, and then you change your life and you help change people around you. So, maybe it sounds very worldly, you know, just, you know, down to earth, just simple issues, but that's what unites people, and when people get hungry or sick, these are the answers they are looking for, like, these are the questions they have, and we know that the right answer is Jesus Christ, but for them to get to that answer, they need to realize how it works on a more practical basis. Вот, а иногда для того, чтобы начать всплывать, нужно отпуститься до дна и только от него отталкиваться. And for some people, they have to go down to the very bottom, just hit it, and then they can start going up, changing something in their life. So that's why this ministry is so important right now, like Sergei Galavin's videos and lectures, because he is a well-educated person, and he, he and other people in the ministry, uh, they talk about simple, you know, everyday stuff, but they talk it in, in the perspective of eternity. So, and uh, Sergei Galavin, he has a lecture of, uh, on um, Praise God for Crisis, and when he put it to, posted on Facebook, even non-believers reposted it. They were like, see, there are really good points here, <laughs> listen to, just, just don't pay attention to Christianity, but listen to the basics. <laughs> I, I know several people myself who did it. They were like, wow, I'm an atheist, but that is good stuff. <laughs> so that's why your ministry is so, so important these days. Mm -hmm. So keep on, <laughs> keep on helping his people. Well, we're honored to be in that together uh, with you. Thank you for being part of the GMPI team as well. And thank you for your, for your time today. I think that uh, one thing I've certainly learned is you know, there are many differences in culture, but there are also many similarities with people <laughs> all over the world as we go through this, uh, as we go through this oh, pandemic yeah. together. So uh, thank you for sharing all of that. Everyone at home, thank you for, for watching today. Um, and Anya, thank you in particular for adding your perspective and for translating for us as well. That's a, a great blessing. Thank too. you.
So everyone, uh, you can check this out as a, as a podcast as well online. That will be available. If you enjoyed this video, please share it as well so other people can get some benefit from it as well. And we will see you next time on Faith Greater Than Fear. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.